see everyone here tonight, and I, I hope we have a, I know we'll have a wonderful service because the Lord's here with us, and uh, he'll, hopefully he'll approve everything that we say and do. We're going to open up the service tonight with number five in your hymn book. It's entitled, I Sing Praises to His Name, number five. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to his name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name. Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Lord, and that's our heart this evening, is that what we do is sing praises to your name. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to know that you're worthy to be praised. Lord, I know that this world praises so many different people, different objects, different lessons, but Lord, I'm so thankful that we're able to come together as your um, people and praise your holy name because you and you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you for allowing us to know that, to know you and have that relationship with you. Lord, I'd ask that this evening what we would do is that we would decrease and that you would increase in our hearts, that we would honor and glorify your holy name. So many people around us are standing in need of you and your touch, Lord, this evening. Struggling, Lord, between death and life, difficulties in families, um, health problems. Lord, so many different difficulties each and every day. And Lord, I'd ask that what we would do is not look to ourselves, but that we would look to you um, for the answer. And Lord, we know that you are able to heal us of our sicknesses. Lord, you are able to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, to be able to make us new again. So thankful that we can put our trust in you. We love you. We thank you. We ask your blessing upon this evening. And may your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like for you to please take out your hymn book and let's all stand together. Uh, the couple of hymns that we're going to sing tonight are golden oldies in the church. Some of you young folks might not have heard these before. But please join with us and sing together. Number first one, number 771. We'll understand it better by and by. 771. The trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the way that God would lead us to blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye, and we'll follow till we. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God will gather at home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Oft our cherished plans have failed, disappointments have prevailed, and we've wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God will gather home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed. And we'll wonder why the test when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. By and by when the morning comes. When the 
saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Amen. How many of you use the word yonder in your daily speaking patterns? Over yonder. Yeah. All the ones over. Well, I'm not given an age. <laughs> okay. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. That's all we can work for, right? And all we can hope for. Number 774. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved on earth shall gather over on the others And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder i'll be there on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead on christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Sing it out. When the roll is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When that roll is called, will your name be on that book? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. I want someone to mark this day down. I think everybody actually sang on that song. This could be a miracle. Jesus could be coming back this evening. <laughs> Amen. We're ready, ain't we? Um, we'll let him come on. Um, but we're thankful that we're able to be in the house of the Lord this evening and just praise his holy name. And, uh, and I, I love to know that when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And I hope and pray that all of us will be there as, as well. Um, real quick, some announcements. Uh, they're going to have a watch party after church. Is that right? And any of you all who are brave enough to stay there, you're welcome to do that. And afterwards, they're going to actually have hot dogs and, and, and such like that. So you're welcome to stay, but you don't, they're not going to lock you in. So you don't have to stay the whole entire time if you would like just for a few minutes to hang out. Um, but we're thankful um, for that. Um, and then this week, we got everything as, as normal going on. On Mondays, uh, we'll... Um, Dr. Edwards got his class, got two more classes left. Um, and then Donnie and Sheila at 6.30 got their class. And then Tuesday, I believe uh, um, Wendell has a class. And then Friday, you have a new class, right? One o'clock. All right. So you got two opportunities at Ray Williams Villa now this and during the week. And Mike and Dana will be back at it. This Tuesday, all right, and then Wednesday we'll be um, in Bible study. Then Thursday uh, is f uh, food bank, and then also uh, dinner church at s and jail at six o'clock. Thank God that's not at the same time, and that would be very confusing, wouldn't it? Uh, but we have three options there of ministry on on Thursday evening. 
Uh, um, any other announcements? Tuesday, um, you're all going to be, are you all going to do that during the summer? I, I, I needed to ask. All right, they're planning on doing that, so we thank the Lord for that. Miss Yanni? I'm thinking about coming to dinner church. All right. Thursday evening. Anybody else with Miss Yanni thinking about coming to dinner church Thursday evening? There's a couple of you that's going to be there with you. That would be a good, good evening. All right. Any other announcements? I want to thank Martin for taking care of the basketball. Yes. Only three years. Amen. And that's, that's awesome. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> um, and, and you know what? We're, we're, we're glad of that as well. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Um, our prayer list, we just want to continue to, to lift up anyone that is, str is struggling um, this evening. Um, any, there's a couple that are in our church that are sick. Um, hopefully, not, not that I know of COVID, but they have some um, po food poisoning, and then a couple have just some very um, serious um, sinus infections and such as, as that. When we were overseas, you could, the, the pollen was so big, you could see it. it. It looked like it was snowing. It was so large. Um, and uh, we all had sniffs in, in the whole entire time. Out of all four of us, I'm the only one who does not snore. Um, <laughs> so I was kind of bragging on that. Uh, of course, I was the only one that I did not hear. Um, not, didn't ask them the, the, if I snored or anything like that. Um, according to Emma, I don't snore. It's just quiet and gentle and everything. It's really amazing. Um, but it, um, I know that so many pray for that struggling with sinuses, and I know if you struggle with sinuses, that's a very difficult thing, but pray for them. And we have a few um, unspoken prayer requests that I would like for you to pray for uh, on your heart that where people are struggling today and, um, and ask God um, to come alongside the families. Do you realize today that the devil hates families? Um, and he wants to destroy families more than he wants to destroy anything in the world. He wants to destroy families before he wants to destroy the church. Because the way he takes down the church is through families. So um, I ask you just to lift up one another and pray for the ones that are going through some difficult times. And as we heard this morning, is that our job is to um, not tear someone down, but our job is to build someone up and, and encourage. Um, and and that's, that's a great opportunity that we have um, today. Um, there is never a good time to talk bad about somebody. And there's always a good time to love your neighbor. And today is a great day to love your neighbor. And then that's what we ought to do, and that's what we should do every single day. But we want to pray for people and lift them up and ask God um, to, to minister um, to each and every one of us that are going through some difficult times. You know, when you're praying for someone who's going through a tough time, you know what? We're only one step away going through a tough time ourselves. And um, I pray that if I pray for somebody as they go through a tough, tough time, and when it's my turn to go through a tough time, you will be praying for me as well. So, um, and that's why we're here for one another. So just lift one another up. Um, anybody else that has a prayer request on your heart this evening? Miss Yanni? Miss Elsie Jones did not come this morning and this evening. We're going to pray for Miss Elsie Jones. Um, well, she has a road trouble, trees down in her road and such like that. So um, we're going to let her use that excuse this week. That's it. Uh, all right. Let's pray for Sheila's sister. Amen. Hmm? Knee surgery. Oh, wow. Um, this week or coming up tomorrow. Pray for Debbie as she has her knee worked on tomorrow. Sue? So? Amen. And anybody else like Sue knows someone right now that's going through some anxiety and depression that we need to lift up. Thank you. Amen. Anybody else? And it's, it's, it's rampant throughout the world. Um, it's not just America, it's, just, it's, it's everywhere. So let's pray, pray for peace that surpasses all understanding.
Amen. Sheila? Amen. Okay. But what we've learned in the last month is we never give up. Amen. Amen. We, amen. We keep praying. Bro, did something? Amen. Pray for all that have yet to accept Christ as their personal Savior. Yes. Amen. Anybody else? Oh, wow. Okay. So let's pray for your brother. Yeah. Becky. Amen. So many dealing with cancer right now. Wendell. Megan, Kevin. Yeah. All right. Donnie. Amen. Anybody just got an unspoken prayer request? Every one of us. Let's let uh, Tim, I want to ask you to come and pray for us and ask God's um, blessing over these prayer requests. Let's pray, church. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the gift that you've given us that is this day. Lord, this day that you've made your day. And we thank you for the awesome privilege we have of coming back together again as a family. Uh, Lord, to worship you. Part of that worship, Lord, is our hearts are heavy for people that we love and we care about that are going through sickness, families that are dealing with death. Uh, Lord, families that seem to be ripped apart at the seams. Uh, Lord, people struggle. People that we love struggle. People that we care about struggle. People that we do not know struggle. Uh, Lord, but we lift them up to you. We lift each family that's on our heart represented here, the spoken and the unspoken. We recognize that you know all of our hearts, all of our prayers, and all of our concerns, Lord. So we give those up to you, uh, Lord, because we place our trust in you. We have nowhere else to give them to. But we know that we have someone we can trust, and that is you. So we lift these prayers up to you. And Lord, may your will be done. Above every other heart, ache, and hurt, and worry, and circumstance that we have, we pray first and foremost for those that do not know you. Uh, Lord, that have not been reconciled to you. Uh, Lord, that you're, we know that you are still in the saving business. And so, Lord, those that do not belong to you, that are not children of God, we pray for them first this evening. I thank you for this great church that you've placed us in. May the balance of this time, what is said and done, bring glory to your name alone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I'm going to just do my little part and get out of the way and let these, these guys share with you some pictures. Um, I want to thank you for allowing us uh, to the possibility of going over again. I, it was a really good trip for me personally um, because I got to... Um, I don't know how you can say, see things that I have not seen um, in, in the past. I got to see um, tons of young people and children that I ministered to when 20-some uh, years ago now, are growing, now have grown up and they're, they're adults, and they're the ones in charge. And, uh, and they're doing a better job than I ever thought about doing. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for that. And it, and it was a blessing um, to me in every area I, I was able to see that. And, um, and I, I just want to, um, today's graduation Sunday, um, and 30 years ago today, it was probably about the same time, um, I graduated from Middleburg High School um, in, um, in Middleburg, Florida. It was outside of Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I was far from God that night. But that night, God did the work in my heart during the graduation um, night, and uh, he brought me back to himself um, that evening of graduation. It was a big night spiritually for me. Um, and um, the, night, the Sunday before, they had a graduation Sunday, and they gave us a Bible. And this lady um, sang a song, and it was the, the fields are... are um, Full, but the, my, the table's full, but my fields are empty. 
And it, she, the name of the song was Pray That the Lord of the Harvest Would Send Forth Laborers in the Field. And, and I told myself, you know, when she sang that song, that um, you should only sing songs in church that came from God. You shouldn't just make up things and sing it however you wanted to sing it. You should actually sing things from the Bible. And I, and I was far from God, but I was correcting her. Has anyone ever done that? Yes, you. I've seen you. Um, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, um, and I was really upset at this, this lady who, who sang that song. But the Bible they gave us, just like you all got a Bible today, I, I opened it up and, and I found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38, it said that the, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray for the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his field. And that night, um, end of May in 1992, I told the Lord that I, I'm no longer going to sit at his table, but I'm going to work in his fields. And he allowed me to do that, and I've been doing it now for 30 years. And I'm so thankful that he allowed not only me to get up and work in his fields, but my whole family. And then also, all those kids that we raised over there, and, the, and even here, I get to see doing ministry, and, and it's as if I get to do ministry with them. And um, so it was, a, it was a blessing. And um, to make me even cry even more, um, there's a few people that you're going to see pictures of and, and hear about over the next few minutes. Um, Audie um, and Kyrene, um, I, they, were, they were just teenagers when I lived over there. And I always thought they were kids, but I discovered that I'm only six years older than them. And, um, and I didn't know that because I was so old for my age. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so mature. Um, and, and now they're, they're serving. They are French citizens. Um, they could be living in France making more money than me here and enjoying a comfortable life in Paris, but they have chose um, to serve in Romania, and nobody will ever know their name. And nobody will ever hear about that. But a whole bunch of Romanians and Ukrainians and Old Davians that they ministered at that time. Um, and there's a few girls um, you'll see pictures of, one of them with Tim, because she's good friends with Tim. Um, um, they are from Holland. And they came over um, to Romania the same week that I went to Romania in 1994. There were 1993. There was three of us that, that showed up, at the, four of us that showed up at the same time. And these three girls from Holland that were just in their 19 or 20 years old at the time have spent their whole entire lives in Romania. They've been there now for 25, 26 years. And they've never married, and they're, they, don't, they do not have any plans to marry. And they've taken care of street children, and they've raised these tr street children, and they, they were not able to cope on their own so they're still living with those same street children that they raised. And these girls are now, how old are they, Emma? 40s? And they, they're not able to take care of their, themselves. And these young ladies are now in their 40s, um, in the, close to 50 probably, and because I'm getting up there, we're close to 50 now. And they're going to take care of these kids their whole entire lives. And. No one is ever going to know those three, those three Dutch girls. There's never going to be a book or a movie. Or, but they serve the Lord every day. And when this, this war started, they went from serving the Lord where they was at. And those now those girls and Adi and Karin and all these others... Now they're bringing in all these Ukrainians to live on top of what they're doing already. And it works out so much. And, and what I want to just see is, what I just want to share with you, is that what Tim taught us this morning is so special. Um, you can find fame in so many different places. 
And you can find wealth in so many different possibilities. But the greatest thing you'll ever find is a servant heart serving Jesus where he puts you. And if it is to, to taking kids off the streets and serving them the rest of your life, and most people would look at that and say, you know what, that was a wasted life. But God looks at that and says, wow, that was that widow's might that he was given that lasted forever. And I know that every one of us would want um, you to be successful. And I want you to make millions and tithe. That's my heart. And if you do, that's great. But what I'd want you to do more than anything in this world is where God wants you to be, be there serving him with all the honor and the glory going to his name. And it might be on the other part of the world doing something, or it might be in Louisa, or it might be in New York City. Wherever it is, do it with all your heart, soul, and might for his glory. And, um, and I, I just want to thank you. My heart was renewed. Seeing a, a kid that I was always six was born leading worship. And leading the church service just blessed my heart. To seeing kids that, that gave me trouble now being a missionary, and I got to give them trouble, <laughs> bless my heart. And um, what we need to be thankful for is that um, God allows us to see these things and be able to be a part of these. So I, I know that when you see these pictures, maybe you'll remember um, that and just pray for these people because they're not after wealth they're not after their name being known they're after um, serving the Lord with gladness and man that is a goal to reach with all your heart and soul and mind so I'm going to turn it over to Tim and Bob and um, they're going to walk you through some pictures these pictures have not wanted to cooperate this evening at all some are upside down some didn't even make it so um, we will do our best, and, and we'll let, let these guys be a part. Guys, come on. And I also want to thank the church for allowing us to go and supporting us with your prayers. If it wasn't for your prayers and your thoughts while we were gone, it would have been a lot tougher to do what we did. But the... Uh, the grace that passes all understanding was over everything that we did and that everything we were able to accomplish. And if we were able to help that much uh, to the people who needed the help, uh, we've accomplished what we needed to do. Uh, you know, Chuck mentioned these ladies from Holland and I remember when Martin and I uh, first went into the uh, uh, the Bible College, it was a barn, and uh, Charles, I believe it was, borrowed a well drilling machine. Do you remember that, Martin? And we drilled the first well on the property there with this really small diameter pipe uh, to uh, get water to the facility. And that well drilling machine was from these ladies from Holland. And uh, so, you know, People, God's people work together to get things accomplished. And uh, I just remember that, and we had a time with that, didn't we, Martin? <laughs> but uh, this trip was so much different than all the others that I have been on. Uh, you know, a lot of times we were building a building or fixing a roof or uh, doing other ministries and, and that type of thing. But this time we were able to see how people love each other no matter what language you're in, what country you're in, churches came together and uh, knew there was a need and tried to fill that need the best they could. Whether it was with used toys that we were able to give out to small children as they came with their families from the Ukraine, um, uh, got out there and played football or soccer with, uh, with some of the kids, uh, and we're talking little kids, and it was just uh, heartwarming that they had a big smile on their face when they got a used toy. Um, most of our kids would have said, no thanks. 
but uh, it was it was really heartwarming. I don't know if we got anything up there, Mike, but um, we actually, I'll, I'll kind of start at the beginning, and, and the picture that's up there now is uh, a picture of the front of the Bible College, and that's Marcella and uh, Chuck and myself and Mike, and I think Tim is probably taking the pictures uh, at this point. But uh, we arrived there and uh, knew that we had things to do, uh, and it was a Thursday, I believe, and on Saturday was going to be the graduation of the three students out of the Bible College, the first graduating class since uh, before COVID, and the only Bible uh, class that has graduated without David Maynard being there. Um, and uh, they all miss him dearly, and we missed having him there dearly. Uh, but. Uh, uh, we kind of set in helping Marcella get things ready with cutting grass and cleaning up this and moving things around. And so we spent a day doing that uh, in between going to the border and working at the border uh, or loading a, a van full of medical supplies and diapers and sardines. They really like their sardines. Do you all like sardines? Uh, <laughs> let it be known that Yanni does not like sardines. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, a glorious time for us. You know, uh, uh, a couple of us are pretty close to 70 years old, and I'm speaking for myself and Mike, and he might not want everybody to know his age, but we're getting awful close to that. And then we got Tim with a bum knee, and then we got Chuck that likes to eat a lot. Uh, so between us, we loaded tons of material and had just a glorious time doing that, knowing that these things were going to go to people who absolutely needed to have them. Uh, and uh, uh, Chuck would say that the people he talked to said, we can have one of these vans, uh, gathered all of these supplies together. Some were purchased with funds that... Uh, uh, were sent over there that we brought with us. Uh, others were donations from uh, different uh, businesses and things, and, and it was uh, just really, really heartwarming that this can be done. Um, and it took us all afternoon to get that loaded, and uh, they spent the next 26 hours driving to the Ukraine, unloading and driving back. Uh, and it was uh, a pretty tough trip. Uh, but a very rewarding trip. Back to the Bible College on Saturday, uh, it was time for the graduation. Uh, now again, there were several people who started this class and only three completed it. Um, I have seen some of the work that has to be done in order to achieve that graduation and, and that uh, diploma, and it's very, very intensive. These folks need to know their Bible. They need to do a lot of work to be able to satisfy the needs of getting this uh, uh, certificate that they've completed this, uh, this college time. Uh, they're very, very proud of that. And many, many of the folks that have gone through this class and gone through the graduation are out serving in their villages now. And uh, again, that was, uh, I think, the, the whole uh, purpose of this college was to get these villages, get uh, God's word in the villages, and it's, and it's working very well. Um, three uh, instructors that they have, uh, one of them is an American, uh, and the others are, uh, Ukra uh, I'm sorry, Romanian, and they, they spend a lot of time with these students, and the students actually come on site, are able to stay there for the, the couple of days each week or each month, whatever the system is working at that time, and they're fed there, and it's, uh, uh, all of their needs are met, uh, including their spiritual needs, and it's a great, great program. Uh, afterwards, they had a barbecue, kind of the same kind of thing that we have when we have a barbecue, except the meat's a little bit different, uh, uh, and it was really good. Uh, during that time, we were able to get uh, uh, online with David and Rody. Here it was like 5 in the morning, and there it was 1 or 2 in the afternoon, wasn't it? Something like that. It was a seven hours difference. And uh, each one of the folks that were there, and there were about 30 people that attended this graduation, family and friends, and, of course, the graduates as well, and the teachers. 
and each was able to to actually look at David and Rhody and speak to them and and offer their uh, uh, gratitude for everything and and I'm I'm sure that David and Rhody really appreciated that time with all of those folks. They couldn't be there in body, but they were definitely there in spirit, and it was a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, Tim, how much do you want me to go? Any further than that? that okay. Uh, again, I, I, I was truly blessed, and all of you that have been on mission work before, whether it be in Romania or Honduras or uh, Dominican Republic or wherever in this world or Maine, New Hampshire, if you've been on mission work, you know that you're not blessing the folks that you're ministering to. You're getting blessed yourself. And uh, so if you have that opportunity as a youngster or an adult, uh, take charge of that and go. Go ye into all the world and spread God's word. And thank you very much. Uh, so I want to share with you, I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is, Bob got engaged in the Ukraine, uh, <laughs> so he's, he's no longer available. He is engaged to a lady when we, uh, when we all together went into the Ukraine. Uh, the city that we went in, Marishov, I believe is how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. But um, we went to a, a refugee crisis center, and we toured the center with Ruslan, was that his name? Ruslan. Uh, which is Ukrainian for half crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I hope he's not watching this. Uh, so, but anyway, so we toured it with him. And at the very back, so they had these rooms, and it was amazing. Uh, Ruslan told us in that city when the war first, first started that there were thousands of refugees that came into the city, so many refugees that the locals couldn't even drive. They had to walk to wherever it is they were trying to get to because the streets were packed with refugees, uh, and a lot of them had cars at that time. When the war first started, a lot of the people that fled were the wealthy people, and they had cars, and they had money, and they had all that, and so it was really hard to get around. Well, this uh, crisis center was already operating before the war. They took in homeless people in that city, uh, you know, disadvantaged people, and they housed them and fed them, just like a, a rescue mission. And, but they packed out when the war came. And they had upwards of 100 refugees at a time in this building. And there wasn't a whole lot of room. These people were sleeping on shelves in storage rooms. Um, so we're touring through it, and we get to the back room back there, and there's two old ladies, beautiful old Ukrainian ladies, who had survived World War II. They were very old. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I hate to say that, Bob, because you said they were only like seven years older than you. <laughs> Uh, so Bob likes older women. Um, so eight years, older. eight years older, yeah, almost a whole decade. Um, but anyway, they had survived World War II uh, as Ukrainians, and now they're surviving this war. They were displaced, and they were there. And she had a little bag of candy. One of the little old ladies did, and she gave Chuck two pieces of candy, and Tim two pieces of candy, and Mike two pieces of candy, and gave Bob a whole big handful of candy. <laughs> Uh, so that was actually the engagement ceremony. And uh, so Bob can now say he has family in the Ukraine. Um, but uh, one thing that I, I did, uh, we had talked about several times while we were there. A big difference is, when we, we kind of mentioned that this morning, Yash is now packed with people. There are a uh, three quarters of a million people now living in Yash. And Audi told us they estimate up to 50,000 Ukrainian refugees are in the city of Yash right now, or have been since the war started. Um, and so Yash has changed a lot. For me personally, uh, it has been nine years since the first time I went, but it was so good to, to reconnect with Audi and his family. And uh, Phineas, the one that Chuck talked about that, was, that led worship, uh, is Audi's oldest child. He's now 20, he's in the university. Uh, he has a car, drives a car, he's got a girlfriend. The last time that I was there, Andy DeLong was with me, and Phineas was a teenager, and uh, the church wasn't done, and underneath the church, Crossroads Church, we were down there playing with the Romanian kids and the gypsy kids, and 
Phineas had a bicycle, and Andy DeLong built a ramp and took that bicycle and jumped on the ramp and broke Audie's bicycle. And so Andy, it was great. He had to buy him a new bicycle. Uh, but to watch all of Audie's kids led the music at worship, and what a blessing that was. So it was great to reconnect with them, with Marcella. Uh, and I don't know, Mike, do you have the picture of the, the little gypsy girl that's like back then and today? Oh, so that picture there, uh, that was, oh, there she is. So, And I still don't know her name, but she knows me. And we fell in love, love with each other five years ago. And uh, I don't know that she had ever seen what we did. We took a selfie, me and her, and that was her this year. And they weren't at church Sunday morning, but the next day we were getting ready to go somewhere. And at the bottom of Crossroads Church is a coffee shop that, that the church rents out. To there, There's a coffee shop there. And her and her mom came by, and when she saw me, she just lit up, and she calls me Yim. Uh, and so I was so thankful to get to, to see her again and her mother and pray for her and her mom. They're going through a tough time uh, right now. But it was good to reconnect with all of those folks. Um, but one thing that Pastor Audie shared, uh, and, and Chuck and Bob have shared this, and we shared it again this morning also, but when we went into Moldova, there was a man named Costell. I don't know, Mike, if you have a picture of his church. Um, there in Bol Bolte. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but anyway, and Costell went through seminary with Audie. They went through seminary together, and they're still friends. He pastors a church in Moldova, and we went and visited him uh, there in Bolte, I think is how you pronounce the city. Uh, and Costell is a lot like what Chuck told you about Adi in that, uh, and Costell just a wonderful man. He's got a beautiful church, uh, and he had a, a core group of people helping him. They are housing missionary or uh, refugees at that church, and then they run a camp that's probably about 15 miles outside of town or something like that, a church camp that they run that are, they're housing refugees there too. But Costell, when he graduated, from seminary had an opportunity to go to Romania to serve uh, and to make a lot more money in Romania than he could in Moldova even at that time and serve but he uh, yeah and in Kentucky he was actually offered a church that's right in the United States in Kentucky but Costell said that him and his wife prayed about it and they felt like God wanted him to serve right there where he was at in Moldova uh, and he's still there today serving uh, the same city there in Moldova that we went to and visited him, we visited. So in that day, we went to Costell's Baptist Church. We visited uh, some pastors at a Pentecostal church. And there was an American there. You remember his name? Texas. The big guy. Texas is what we called him. Yeah, because he's from Texas. Um, a Pentecostal church there. And they're the same way. They're housing refugees. They're stressed up to here with what's going on because it is hard to pastor. It is hard to pastor in COVID, and COVID was not an American thing. It's a world thing. And then on top of that, these pastors are having this war thrust upon them, too, and trying to pastor. Uh, and then we also went to, when we went into Ukraine, uh, to a charismatic church, which was Ruslan and, and his bunch. Uh, so we enjoyed a Skittles, if you would, of Christian pastors that day. But every one of them. The great thing about all of those churches that we visited, and actually a couple more, was that those churches were active. They were very active. They were doing everything that they could to serve the Lord by serving the people that God was sending them, sending to them. And I say that to say this. I think I mentioned it at the 830 service this morning. Those guys are tired. It's now been three full months that that war has been going on, and there's no relief in sight. Uh, they don't think there's a quick end to this war. Uh, that's Costell's church there in Bolte. Um, and so they're tired. Uh, they're wore out. They're thin. Uh, and what we need to do as a church here, support them however we can, but first and foremost in prayer. Those folks need prayer. They need some uh, encouragement from us. And I think that was our biggest purpose in being there for all of the churches that we visited. Uh, we did work everywhere we went, sometimes a lot, sometimes not much, uh, but encouragement uh, is what a lot of those folks needed. Uh, I do want to share that, so when we went into Ukraine, when we all went in together uh, and met with Ruslan, do you have a picture of the bus, Mike? 
when we get into that city, we went to the church first. Uh, we thought, we were told, yeah, there's the bus. We were told uh, in, in Yosh, so the Sunday morning that we go to church, Chuck mentioned this morning there was a lot more Americans than there was anybody else there. Well, the one guy that was from Nashville, his mom, he, uh, his aunt and uncle, yeah, his aunt was there with us at church. She is Indian from Nashville, was living in Ukraine, married a Ukrainian. When the war started, she left and came to Yosh. Her husband, who's Ruslan, stayed in Ukraine because he's a man he couldn't leave anyway. Uh, and so her nephew, uh, what was his name, Max? Max is the guy that Chuck talked about this morning. He was in that one picture. He is the uh, Iranian. He is the Romanian Alex Strickland. He looks just like Alex Strickland on steroids. <laughs> uh, so, Alex, you know, you're a quarterback. This guy was definitely a defensive end, a uh, big guy. But anyway, so here are all these people. And then there's another guy in the church service in Yosh that is from Georgia. And so we had some Vanderbilt Commodores. We had some Georgia Bulldogs and Kentucky Wildcats all in a building in Romania. But we all got along. It was pretty good. When we get to the Ukraine, the, the lady that was from Nashville, her husband was Ruslan. That's why we went back into the Ukraine when we all went together. And we get to his church, and there's him and two other guys. He told Chuck when we got there, he said, I've got two other missionaries here with me. And they're in the picture. You can't really see them very well. But those guys were from Belgium. And one of them, um, the, the guy that owns that bus, his position, his job is... He is the head of Christians for Israel, Ukraine. His lifelong mission is he, any Jews, any Jewish people in the country of Ukraine that desire to get back to Israel, to, to repatriate back to Israel, he makes a way for them to do that, including transportation. And if you go back to that bus picture, Mike, um, the bus that he had that was in the parking lot there when we pulled in, you'll see on there it says... C4I, and then those two things. What that is, is Christians for Israel, and the big line is the coast of Israel on the Mediterranean, and the dot is Jerusalem. That's what that stands for, uh, and that is his passion. That is, his, uh, that is what he does. Now, he has changed that since the war started. and is helping any refugees uh, that need to go, but that was his passion. That was pretty cool to get to meet and talk with those folks. Um, <sighs> At, in that same city in Ukraine, when we went to uh, the rescue mission, the, uh, the refugee center, there was a guy, and I don't remember his name. Can you remember the guy that cooked for us? Sergey. Was his name Sergey uh, lived in Crimea. In 2014, when the Russians invaded Crimea, his house was destroyed. And so he went to Kharkiv was a refugee from 2014 and moved to Kharkiv. Restarted his life there. He lost everything he had uh, in, in the Crimea. So, and then when this war started, his house was destroyed by bombs in Kharkiv, and he came to the city that we were in. So this is his second time in eight years of being a refugee inside his own country because of war. He's lost everything uh, except his hope in God. And his faith in mankind through Ruslan and the people that took him in there at that rescue mission. We, you, this church, helped that man uh, with financial support. He is a fantastic cook. The best meal that I ate while we were gone was in that rescue mission in the Ukraine uh, that, that he cooked in the, in the soup kitchen there in the Ukraine. And it was amazingly good. It was fantastic. He's a great cook. He needed money to build a smoker. He wants to start smoking meats to make him some money. He plans on staying in that city and helping Ruslan with the other refugees that are coming in. And this church, some of the money that you gave uh, for services over there was given to Sergey to get him a smoker, to get him to where he can make some money and get back on his feet again. Yeah, and to feed the folks there in the, in the refugee center. Um, so what a blessing that is. And I wanted you guys to know that, uh, that things like that are where the financial support that, that you all gave us, some of the type things uh, that was given there. The last thing I'll say is I did notice for any of you all that have been to Romania, 
the last full day that we were there, um, Mike and, and Bob stayed back at the school to help Marcella do some more things to the building and to the grounds. And me and Chuck made the loop. We went to Vaslui and then up to Scantea and Negresh and Garage Door and made the loop. Excuse me. The roads are so much better when, than when you guys were there. The roads are fantastic. The EU has pumped a lot of money into Romania. And even in the villages, even in those remote villages, they have blacktop roads with lines on them. It was great. Uh, and the other thing I did notice about Romania that I'd never seen before uh, is national pride. They're taking a lot of pride. There was Romanian national flags in people's yards, in the streets, in the villages, all over the place. Uh, and you didn't see that before. In Romania, they have been oppressed for a lot of years by, the, by their own government. Um, and I suppose that's what war does to you. Uh, so they have a lot of national pride now in Romania, Romania that I'd never seen before. But like everybody else said, I do want to thank you guys uh, for sending us, for being a church that wants to send, that is willing to send. Uh, and, and finally, pray for all of those folks. Pray for the refugees. Uh, we can't really imagine what those people are going through. And pray for the folks that are caring for the refugees. And the last thing I'll say is, uh, I've heard, you know, the, the ones that we got to talk with and to share with, by and large, every one of them, like we shared this morning, they believe the war is won. They just don't know when. The Ukrainians are very tough people. They think they've already won the war. They just don't know when the end is. But I believe that we also need to pray for the Russians. I believe, by and large, most of the men that are in the Russian military do not want to be where they were at, where they're at and do not want to be participating in and doing what they are doing. Uh, that is really kind of against their will, and they don't have much choice, a lot of them. Some that's not true, uh, but we need to pray for the Russian soldiers that are there too, and for the Russian government. Uh, God can do a lot bigger things than make a guy in Moscow uh, change his heart, and so we need to pray for those folks too. Thank you all. Yeah. A couple other things. Uh, last week, I guess it was last week, maybe a week before, I don't lost track of time, you had a Gideon speaker in here. Uh, and he, was, uh, he spoke at both the 8.30 service and 11 o'clock service. Gave you an opportunity to learn more about the Gideons or, and also to participate in uh, our offerings and so forth to, uh, to uh, distribute Bibles throughout this country and throughout the world. And I believe at our last meeting, I'm a Gideon, Don Thompson's a Gideon. Is there any others here tonight? I don't know. Uh, but I think we're right at 3 billion copies of God's Word has been distributed through the Gideons since the inception. 3 billion copies of God's Word. Uh, when we were in the Ukraine at the rescue mission, I learned that the that director, the crazy guy, has just become a Gideon, and he's responsible for distributing Gideon Bibles, or the Bibles, throughout that part of the, the country. And he was kind enough to give me a couple of copies. I've got a, uh, one in uh, Ukrainian that's a, uh, give, they're given to all the military people. It's camouflage cover. And actually in the United States, we give camouflage Gideons, or Bibles to uh, all those folks uh, going overseas. So uh, when you think about God's word being distributed throughout the world, it actually happens. And the funds that we give here in the United States funds most of the Bibles that are distributed throughout the world. And I know our church is very generous to that, and I want to thank you guys for that. Another thing, when we were in Moldova uh, at Costell's church, he wanted to take us to lunch, so we went to lunch. We went to Andy's Pizza. <laughs> well, they didn't have any beef and they didn't have any chicken. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to find something to eat. But uh, we all said, we need to send that to Andy. Uh, so uh, you got the picture. Okay. You can break bicycles and make pizza. So you're a good guy. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring that up. And I thank you again. Uh, it was a great trip. And thank you all. Has anybody got a question? Uh, I know that this, our pictures didn't work. We, we've learned what, we did not learn what a H-I-E-C is, but one day we will. And we couldn't get it to flip over in the same right place. But 
Um, does anybody have a, a question or a thought? Anybody at all? Oh, that was a, in the Orthodox Church. That's where they do their baby baptisms. Yeah, uh, we can't get back there, but um, there it is. Um, I don't know if you in the Catholic Church they pour um, water on top of the babies. Has anyone ever seen that? Um, but in the Orthodox Church, it's kicked up a notch. They're between us and the Catholic Church. They actually take the child in that in in that. Um, baptistry right there there's a little in in cove in the back the priest stands there in the back and he takes that child that's just a week two weeks old and he takes him and he dumps him in the water three times it is the best thing you've ever watched in your life um, that kid is as mad as you could possibly be uh, you couldn't get worse um, uh, when it happens, and, and they've had some accidents um, and with, with, with that as well, but um, it's, it's very interesting to watch. Uh, anybody else? Why do they Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> Miss Shawnee. Uh, did you have a good trip? We had a great trip. Thank you, Miss Shawnee. Yeah. I mean, anybody else? Question? None, except at the end. Um, Bob and Mike had to have one. And uh, we, no one mentioned COVID to us the whole entire time. I mean, no, there, no, we only saw maybe one or two people wearing masks. And then when we got to Vienna, it was like we, we entered into COVID land. Every single person had a mask on. We were the only people in the country of Austria that did not have a mask on. It was very odd. Um, they, they are still very much um, pro mask, and none of them had regular mask. All of them, they all had um, N95 mask, and um, took it very seriously. Um, and um, um, it was odd. It was really odd. Uh, anybody else? But we did pass. They did pass. And we did discover that if you've had COVID, you're on an international list and they know, everybody knows you have had COVID already. I did not know that existed, but they knew that me and Tim had already had COVID and they knew that Mike and um, Bob had not had COVID in Austria, Vienna, Austria. They had this information. So, um, huh? That's not freaky at all, is it? No, it's <laughs> completely normal. Huh? Anybody else? The who? Yes. We're struggling the most right now in helping orphanages, old folks' homes, and special needs places. Those are the three areas of refugees that, that are the hardest to take care of. And unfortunately, it's been difficult. We dealt with one special needs case of an elderly lady who was, um, oh, how was the correct way of saying that? Not, not all there. And we had to call the police because none of our kids, if you look, if you saw the refugee centers, do you have a picture of that, Mike? No, I mean, the, the three containers with the kids, with, with the workers? All of our workers are, are kids college students. Um, very few are, are above the age of 30. Um, uh, if you were 35, you'd be the older person there. Most of them were teenagers, college students, 25 something and that nature. And um, the, that lady pulled up in here and their dog actually bit one of our young ladies and, um, and she was screaming and they actually had to, um, the par paramedics had to um, tie her down. Um, and take her to the mental hospital. But that's what she came, they emptied a mental hospital and was bringing it because it got bombed. Um, so right now, the biggest trouble that they're having are with orphanages, special needs homes, and mental illness um, centers, and, and, re and also um, 
geriatric centers. So those are hard to, to do. Now, a lot of them that we've dealt with, when they came across, they came across with grandma. They went to the, they, they brought her with them. Um, but in many cases that no one had that possibility. So we had a couple vans, like for the one that, that Mike and Bob's girlfriend um, <laughs> lives. Uh, yeah, fiance, yeah. Uh, they, uh, they, brought, they brought the whole nursing home and just established right there. So um, really hard. In my mind, I never even thought about that. But, and I know Tim Tebow is doing a lot of work with the special needs um, part of it. And he's helping get them out of the country. And I would add that uh, one thing that every one of the churches, and especially at the camp there, uh, what Pastor Ollie talked about, is their biggest need now they, they have money, they have supplies, they have food, they have all that stuff. The biggest need they have is human resources. When the war started, they had all these volunteers. And just like this disaster over here, it's now been three four months, and they can't find people to get in places. And then we're And Ruslan asked us to do some things that we could not do. Um, the poor, the, like his son who got called up to the military had to provide his own stuff. Um, gun, night goggle, night vision goggles, vest, and he wanted us to help in that way. And I'm like, I don't know if that's something we can do. You know, I've never done anything like that, but they, they, they don't have anything to, in that part of it. Anybody else? But like Tim said, if you are of age and able and would like to go over, um, we can connect you up uh, and put you to work there on the border because um, that's really what they're needing is someone to, to be there. And if you speak Russian, it's a bonus. We pay you extra. You get an extra zero on whatever side of the check you want it on. Um, um, it don't matter. Um, but it is a great thing, and, and we do. We have some great volunteers. Um, we have a young lady named Alina. She, was a, she worked for the Romanian UPS um, um, in there, and she uh, um, got aggravated her employee and um, had some difficulties, and she quit two weeks before the war started. And um, when the war started, she was the one who took care of, she's now in charge of the, of the refugees. She's the one who does all that stuff. And I said, you know what? God knew exactly that they needed a logistics expert on this situation. And he retired one right before the war started. And Alina is uh, very organized, and she knew exactly um, um, what everything was going on. If we needed to ask a question, we asked her, and she told us how it was supposed to happen. And that's exactly how it happened. She is. She's on. Where's she at? Yeah, that's her beside of me. What I don't like is the camera always adds weight to me but no one else <laughs> I'm always bigger than everybody else in pictures and I don't understand how that works but it doesn't but that's her right in front of me there um, and Lena is her name and then uh, all those young people from the church really stepped up and served the Lord so we're thankful for that anybody else um, buses yeah, and trains, but mostly buses. Um, every day we, we had a bus stop on the way through the border and what was 62 people in one bus one time. And on those buses came dogs and cats and one monkey. Um, so all their animals they didn't want to leave behind, they brought them and um, it, it, one thing that the the workers did is they kept dog food on hand costly because every one of those uh, vehicles that we saw had dogs and cats um, because who's going to leave pooch at the house you know uh, so um, it was a uh, something you didn't think about but but most of those the poverty ones um, we didn't see any walking but they had there are places that they walk across but our particular one I did not see one person walking. 
This would be what they saw when they came up, that, the Red Cross tent and that, that sign there. All right. Anybody else? All right. But we just thank you for praying for these young these people as they serve and praying for the ones that are misplaced. Two-thirds of the Ukrainian children have been misplaced. That's a huge number. And I just ask that you, you lift up that country. If the war ended today, it would take years for them to get back to normal. Um, but just pray, pray for them in this, in this time. Very tough people, the Ukrainians are. A very, um, very, uh, ob <laughs> they're, th yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it makes me look little again. Um, but um, that was in Vienna. Um, but we did have uh, uh, a good even time in, in that until we, we didn't have a good time. <laughs> uh, but we're thankful that we had this opportunity and we want to, to be able to uh, continue to pray and be a part of the Ukrainian help and just never forget. Just like Tim said, it got old and people forgot about it and it's got old and people forgot about it in America too. But it's still happening, and um, people still need help. So I want to pray, ask God to help us. And we're, we won't do an invitation. We'll just take up the offering. But our invitation is always this, is you know what? The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest would send forth labors in his field. I don't know if the Lord's going to send you into the foreign field or, or the domestic field or where he's going to send you, but God has a field for who? For every one of us. And may we get on it. And may we work in that field today. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. And Lord, we ask right now that your special blessing will be upon each one of these um, Romanians and Moldavians and, and Ukrainians that we spoke about. And Lord, we know that they're serving and doing what they can do. And we just ask, Lord, that you would take care of them and bless their works. Thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to be a part of that ministry. Thank you for our church who reaches out, Lord, not just at home, but on the other most parts of the world. We just ask today that every one of us here would be reminded that we have a mission field that God that you've called us to, and may we be on it, serving, loving, and thanking you for all that you've done for us. We just love you, and we ask all these things to be um, in your name done. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. 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 we got a song. We'll have the ushers come forward. We'll take up offering and ask God's blessing upon this evening. And then I believe they got hot dogs and... Huh? Okay. Oh, we don't have no offering plates? <laughs> That's life in the fast lane right there. Anybody else got a question while we wait here um, patiently? We're not going to sing until you all give. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but we did, let me tell you something happened and, and that reminded me with Tim. I never would take up an offering in, when I first planted my first church in Romania because uh, the first church had 10 people in it and if you took all their salaries together, it would not a average $100. So nobody had any money. So I was too ashamed to take up an offering. So I didn't, I never did take up an offering. And um, I was sick, no, I, I, either I was sick or I had to do something and we had a visiting um, um, evangelist from North Carolina. And um, he preached for me in the church, first church plant. And in the middle of that church plant, um, in the middle of that service, he just took up an offering. And people gave. And ever since then, um, and even still now, those, that church has taken up an offering 30 year, 25 years later. And I, it wouldn't have ever happened if it was just left up to me because I didn't think their money was significant enough to help, and I didn't want to take their money away from them. But I forgot that it was a part of worship, and each and every time when we meet, we're able to do this, and I'm thankful for that, that opportunity. Let's um, have a song. and. Um As, as they're passing the plate around, let's sing the chorus of He Lives, He Lives, Christ Jesus Lives Today. He 
He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives. 